In Smite right now, Achilles is one of those gods that can legitimately fill multiple spots in a team composition without feeling like he's being outclassed in any of them. In the jungle, the extra movement speed and power he gets from his passive, which we'll move on to later, allows him to outclimb many assassins early on when warriors are typically at their weakest. In support, the other part of his passive allows him to stay in fights longer and deal more damage than a lot of his support counterparts. Solo lane is where I believe Achilles is at his strongest however, as he is one of the most flexible gods who can adjust to whatever situation is thrown his way. A very valuable trait in a solo laner. I feel like many players still don't take advantage of Achilles and what he can do, so I thought I'd throw together a guide to try and help out some of these people. So where else to start but with Achilles passive, Gift of the Gods. When in the fountain, Achilles can choose whether or not to equip armour before he goes onto the battlefield. With armour, Achilles gains 25 extra base health, with 15 more being gained per level. In addition to this, he also gains 5 bonus protections of both kinds, with 2 more protections of each per level. This means that at level 20, Achilles will have 45 extra protections, as well as 325 extra health. I am invincible! Those are some insane numbers, so why would you go without armour? Well, because going without armour is also insane, just in terms of extra aggression and damage instead. With his shirt off, Achilles gains 1% movement speed at level 1, scaling to 6% at level 20. With less weight attached to him, Achilles also gains 3 power at the start of the match, scaling to 43 extra power by the end of the game. This passive is not looked at by enough players and it is what makes Achilles so good. There is no fancy progression with Achilles auto attacks, they are always the same speed, area and damage. He does weave in autos amongst his abilities which I will demonstrate later, but nothing special here. So, onto the good stuff, his abilities. Achilles 1 will damage all enemies in a cone in front of him, dealing 100% damage to enemies closer to you and stunning them for 1 second, with no stun and damage falling off to 85% to enemies farther away. It is important to note here that there is some charge up time with this ability, so it can be cancelled if interrupted. Achilles 1 is great for clear as you can hit the entire wave with its long range as well as potentially halting your enemy's clear with a stun. Gotcha, bitch. It also has 90% physical power scaling which is very high for a warrior ability. Ah yes, Achilles 2, the bane of all solo laners and gankers alike. With only a 10 second cooldown, this ability is downright broken when it comes to boxing and survivability. When activated, for 5 seconds, Achilles will be healed for each ability hit on an enemy god, gain up to 10% bonus physical power, 20% bonus protections, and 20% flat crowd control reduction. In conjunction with his other abilities, this makes Achilles fairly unkillable post level 4 in lane, barring a 3 man rotation. The sheer number of things this ability does makes it one of the best in the entire game. For his third ability, Achilles can dash in any direction he chooses before throwing out his spear, dealing fairly low damage to all enemies hit, however if he does hit an enemy god, he can use this ability again before it goes on cooldown. This second casting can actually be withheld for a few seconds before disappearing, so you could dodge, throw out your spear, dodge, use your one, then throw out your spear for a second time if you wanted. In combination with his two, Achilles can dodge enemy god's abilities, deal decent damage and heal himself all within a few seconds. Executions are always going to be a huge advantage to have in this game and so Achilles ultimate is forever useful. Achilles rises into the air being CC immune but damage taken is increased by 10% before dashing forward and instantly killing an enemy god below 30% health. If this god is killed, the ability can be used again and again after that if another is killed. The damage Achilles takes is increased by 10% for each use, so watch your health bar when using his ultimate. If the god is not below 30%, they take fairly good damage with up to an impressive 100% scaling. Oh hi Mark! Bear executes should be what you're really going for here. This ability is great for escapes also, as you can avoid ults from the likes of Daji or Ares, as well as many other abilities oh, fuck. if you're low on team fights and need to make a quick escape. Now we've gone over what his abilities do, I want to run over one or two combos that Achilles can utilise to maximise his damage and survivability. As his two lasts for an obscene amount of time, it should be used at the start of a fight so it can be put on cooldown as fast as possible, so that the extra protections and heals can be used if an escape is needed. Outside of this, Achilles kit is fairly simple and can be used in whatever order you'd like for the most part. If you're chasing someone, you could use your 3 to get in range, throw the spear, melee, use your 1, melee, then use the 3 second cast to follow up after a potential dash or a jump away. 
Just make sure you are mixing in some autos amongst your abilities, as you should be building Hydra's Lament on Achilles pretty much every game, even in support due to Achilles' low animation times, the double cast on his 3, and his low cooldowns. Speaking of items, the new 7.7 .7 update is right around the corner, and with it comes a whole host of changes. For relics, Teleport and Thorns seem to be here to stay for solar laners, but with Sunder and Cursed Ankh now countering shields, it could be an option versus the likes of a Nemesis and Nike combo, with Beads of course being an option versus a Hades or an Anubis. Gladiator's Shield has finally been reworked after what seems like an eternity. I believe it will take some time for gods who used to use the old Gladiator Shield, such as King Arthur, Osiris and Shaq, have their builds figured out. Achilles, however, seeing as he has only two damaging abilities, can now just go straight into Boots, which was already a viable strategy. Then, he can go into his normal build. The core of Achilles' build will remain fairly standard as far as Solar Lane goes. Warrior's Blessing has buffed Warriors in the lane as a whole, as the extra true damage means that non-Warriors need to be wary when fighting. I suggest going straight into Warrior Boots. As Teleri Boots have been nerfed and Achilles isn't worried about attack speed, the added power and new extra mana are great on him. However, I do believe that something like Void Shield may become the norm to go into first if you want the early power and protections. After boots, go into the protection that matches your opponent. Breastplate of Valor vs Physicals is always a good choice as the extra cooldowns can be a great help. Genji's and Pestilence are great versus Magicals, depending on whether or not they have healing. From there, over to just getting Hydra somewhere in your build within the next two slots. If you are doing well in lane and are ahead, get it forth. If you think you need more protections, move into a Void Shield or even the new Gladiator Shield versus Physicals. Versus Magicals, I'd suggest Runic Shield or even Ancile if they had channeling abilities. After this, go into Hydras and equip armor if you feel like you need it. This will increase your damage in fights and push you to the 40% cooldown cap, allowing you to utilize its passive even more. After this, I really like the look of the new item that has replaced Masamune, the Sledge. Relatively cheap at 2300 gold, and a nice combo of health, power, mana, crowd control reduction, and that juicy passive, adding up to 30 of each protections. You will need protections opposite to that which you bought in your third slot. Then, sell your blessing for Heartseeker, especially as it now has percentage pen as opposed to flat pen, and has been made cheaper, making it the best late game damaging item for warriors. I have to say that this is only a guide build. After you finish your third item, it really is game dependent and counter building should be a huge part of what you build. If you are against a lot of auto attack gods, mid guardian may be best, or perhaps a wing play to help deal with a lot of CC. As you play the game more, you will learn what is needed on a game by game basis and you can adjust your builds accordingly. Unless you are in diamond or above, I really think too much is made of matchups and most of the time, the person with the most skill will end up winning the lane. Saying that, Achilles does have some notable matchups that you need to be aware of. As Achilles' early clear is relatively poor, despite his good boxing ability, gods who can clear the wave fast and proceed to poke down Achilles before he has a chance to clear their wave can do really well into him. Gods such as Kamazot, Mulan and Osiris do really well into Achilles because of this. Gods with abilities that can be interrupted, such as Vamana Dash, Fenrir Brutalize, or Guan Yu's 3, I don't know the name of it, can easily be interrupted by Achilles 1. These gods also tend to have to stand in the wave in order to clear it. Nah, no, you're just a cunt. And so can be hit by Achilles 1, as well as this also hitting the wave. Achilles is also quite good in tanks in the solar lane, as their high health can be whittled down using his good boxing ability, and then his execute can hit them with the finishing blow. If you are really comfortable on the Achilles and the opponent has picked a god that is meant to counter him, but does not fully understand that god's kit, then you are going to win still most of the time, so don't worry about matchups too much. To finish off the guide, I'd like to go over some key gameplay tips that can instantly improve your experience with Achilles. When in lane, it is normally the best option to start Achilles 3 over his 1, as most warriors will have to stand in the wave in order to clear it, making the second cast much more likely. There are of course some exceptions to this, Versus ranged gods, you can start your 1 for better clear, as the enemy will normally be too far back to hit them and the wave with your 3. Gods who start a channeling ability, such as Bologna and her 2, can be countered using Achilles 1 early, especially if they expect you to use your 3. Do not be afraid to use your ultimate for escaping a gank from the enemy team, or even just using it to close ground when chasing. You don't want that thing up the entire game because you are waiting for them executes. Do not forget your passive. 
The reason Achilles passive is so good is because it can change his role in team fights on the fly. Don't swap once at the start of the game and then never switch again. Saying this, remember that you aren't invincible. Just because you have a sleek new chess piece on does not make you Superman, so still be cautious. Especially versus ADCs, who will have built protection shred by the time you normally swap to armor stance. So there it is, the ultimate Achilles guide you'll need to pwn your opposing solo laners in the new update. This is my first one of these guides, so it'd mean a lot if you let me know how you found it in the comments and who you think I should do next. I do stream on Twitch regularly and we have been growing at a surprisingly fast rate as of late, so come check it out at the link in the description. I've been Hurley IDK, peace out.